Hi guys, and welcome to today's task. For today's task, we are getting started on digging our power. Now, when you put in power, it has to be a certain depth down. There's a certain protocol we have to do to put conduit in so that we can run our power so that it's protected. Right here is where our power is actually gonna connect off. There was conduit put here years and years ago from the property that way. If you're building here, you incur that cost to send power that way. Kind of a fair trade, I guess. You'd have to pay for it either way. If you either gotta pay to come through their yard or pay to send it through yours, I guess it evens out, it's the same. But you can always tell when you're by power because if they followed proper protocol, there is going to be some sort of a tag here. And our conduit is buried somewhere down in here. We came across it, we just need to dig it back up again. But that's not the issue we're working on today. This will be a little bit later in this project. Right now, we have to dig a trench that goes all the way across our property. The trench has to go way past that tractor all the way to the edge of our property and then down to where it's gonna connect on the house. And at the same time, there's a lot being built up here and they're gonna connect up that way as well. So that is what we're digging for the next couple of days. So for now, we're just digging and staring at like the coolest looking ram I think I've ever seen. That thing is so cool. We've got one of the three trenches laid. The next one is this one, but the track just went offline because of all the rocks. There's a lot of rocks in here. It's really good soil and sandy soil, but then you run into rocks all the time. So through a track, and now we're just gonna throw it back on. You guys, we have gotten a lot done today and we have another full day tomorrow and possibly Friday. One of the things we're waiting on is pipe. And like all things, building materials right now, there is a shortage and they come when they come and you pay top dollar for it. So that kind of stinks, but I'm glad we're getting this done. We have got one part of the trench all the way done. We have gotten three of the four risers that are gonna go into this box prepped and ready, but we ran out of couplers. So I've got a few parts to pick up tomorrow morning before I get here. But what I wanna show you is the layers of the electrical system that we're putting in. This is what it looks like if you were to dig up your meter underneath it at your house. This is what you're gonna find is conduit with a really heavy gauge wire in it. Now, mine will look a little different because before your wire hits your house, if you're in like a subdivision or something like that, uh, there's transformers and your wire's already split and it's a little bit different. Um, but whereas this one isn't, they're gonna run one really, really fat cable. I don't know what the size is, but it's big. And they run it through this and then they transform it at my house. So I'll have a big green box at my house, which is kind of what you have to do when you live out in the sticks. That's the cheapest way to send power to your house because it's all about cost. And we really wanna reduce the cost. So they send the simplest wire possible that way. So that's what we're doing. But if you were to look underneath this, you'll see that we have a box that doesn't belong there, but it's got parts in it. But we have our conduit laying down on the ground and we laid it right on this stuff because uh, this area looks a little rocky, but the rest of it is actually really sandy. And so it's okay to lay this on top of that sandy bed. Then you put this other rock on top, 10 inches. Then you put this, this is a 
danger line. And the purpose of that is to inform somebody digging that, hey, you're digging an area where there are buried utilities. And so this is a warning so that they don't keep digging and cut pipe. Fun fact, I did break and cut somebody's pipe um, while I landscaped. And what's even a crazier fact is those people still go RVing with me. So, sorry, Mandy. You can kind of see it in real effect here. So you have the pipe, you have the sand, and then you have the warning track right there. That's how we knew we were close to this conduit right here. So what we've done is connect into it, run a stub all the way there, and it's gonna go up into that box. This is a rule of practice for whether you're doing plumbing for say your inside of your house, connecting any plastic pipes, or if you're connecting any sprinkler pipes outside, this is how you glue it. I prefer gluers that don't require a primer. This one doesn't require a primer. And you completely coat the inside of the bell housing or coupler or whatever you're putting it in on the inside. Dip it again and completely coat this as well. So it is just one, really glued up, and two, it's lubricated so it'll slide on because this is a lot of pipe to push. Oh, come on, there we go. And that should be good. And a cool thing about that glue is the glue isn't really what's bonding it. The glue creates a chemical reaction that welds the two pieces of pipe together. So if it's glued properly, this pipe will never come out or break. Now we'll take another 90 clear down there and we'll start moving that way. Little tip, I like to grab a little dirt clod or a rock if I can and prop up this one because you have to glue the outside of it. It's not protected, so you lift it up so it's got some kind of a void underneath it so you don't get too much dirt in your glue. It's inevitable, you're gonna get it, but this will help you get a little less. And then you oh, gotta clean that guy out. On and twist. Like a glove. Come jump in a hole with me. Let's jump in a hole. These guys, oh, that's dark. That's really dark, okay. 